Another friend of Jimmy's, John Bennett, is here. Again, again, politics introduced these two men years ago. In 1978, Jimmy was traveling around North Carolina working for Max Smith, and he was campaigning for U.S. Senate. And John Bennett was traveling around North Carolina representing Governor Jim Hunt. And uh, these two young, blonde, and uh, good-looking, good-looking fellows, they were both, you know, they were both young, they were both, they were both very active uh, politically, and Jimmy was John and that John was Jimmy and they would have to kind of clear that up so they kind of heard about each other before they actually before they actually met finally they met at a democratic event a, a event and a lifelong friendship has flourished so these two don't just love politics they both love to travel they have trekked and explored Jamaica and Cuba Spain and Hickory, North Carolina. <laughs> Their adventures have landed them in a few tight spots. I have heard all the stories, but it is theirs to tell. Let's just say, boys will be boys. <laughs> Never do this and don't tell it all. It's your last chance, I would like to start off in a defensive mode to clarify when Megan was talking about Jimmy's loved ones and family and friends, and she also meant, mentioned a partner, that that is not me. Um, I also would like to go ahead and address, break the ice, if you will, the 800 pound gorilla that's in the room, and that is the color of my pants. That is just, I'm being modest. <laughs> uh, it's three inches south of my belt, which has no good uh, name for it. Uh, I was telling Megan one of your jokes, and this is how it ended up. Uh, with, with, Megan throwing, with Megan throwing the, the, the birthday cake in my lap. Hey, Jimmy, how, how do you know you're old and you're 70? Hey, John, 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 here. This one? You can take, you can, you can take I'm not going to do that. Yeah. How do you know you're old and you're 70? when you invite cops to your own birthday party. <laughs> I'd like to first ask your forgiveness, this humble soul. Um, uh, I am gonna be using notes tonight. Not that I might not be able to remember everything, but I was fearful of not being able to say all the things that Jimmy wanted me to say about it. <laughs> uh, it goes without thank, uh, thanks, or without saying thanks to Dee Dee for him seeing, there couldn't be a better person to do it. Thanks to the ballot uh, for hosting this, for paying for it, uh, and for making all this possible from, for so far away. Thank you, great job. Uh, I'm confident Jeannie would not do this for me. Uh, the, uh, and to Megan and Sandy for giving Jimmy family purpose, because we know how Jimmy needs family purpose, and y'all do it. Uh, and to Roger, I mean, I, I had one request, Roger, that was not to follow you. And so this is Dee Dee getting back at me. Okay, so there, nobody could have given a better history of Jimmy Warren. And what, what a wonderful expression of Jimmy. And not least, Jimmy Warlick. If ever you needed to answer the cosmic question, who am I? Just look around the room and see how many family and friends have come from a long way away at great expense to be here today. You are clearly an admired man. Congratulations. Now seriously, when paid in cash by Jimmy to prepare comments for today's event, <laughs> I found out just yesterday I had to edit my comments from a good two hours of stories. And there were so many stories, and two hours is conservative, down to a smaller number of minutes. And this was when I was informed that in attendance today would be miners, magas, worshipers of every faith. Jimmy's mother in spirit, non-sexuals, West Virginia relatives, <laughs> sorry Reese's, 
and Garrison, and Garrison Keeler fans. Then another mi uh, nine minutes were redacted simply out of my total respect for that. <laughs> so I guess I now conclude with my comments and just say, Jimmy, happy birthday. <laughs> well, well, I, have another, I have another four minutes. Well, I'm sorry my wife, Jeannie, could not be with us tonight in what appears to be a conglomeration of all 70 years of past birthdays, which Jimmy evidently did not feel properly recognized. <laughs> this event is so grand. I believe it should incorporate your and Valerie's upcoming 30th uh, engagement party. <laughs> the, the wedding he never had. And unless we plan to gather like the, this again, I would propose today we also include Jimmy's memorial service, <laughs> which a decade ago I would have safely predicted would have never occurred by the t before, before he got to 70, by the time he got to 70. Let's all be reminded that Jimmy was diagnosed with a brain aneurysm a few years back. And yes, he has a brain. <laughs> and his neurosurgeon advised him to stay calm and avoid crowds. Well, we know Jimmy has never listened to advice. Now, after 70 years, 70 years, damn, man, Ooh, you're old. Geez. After 70 years, due primarily to finding himself in a state of tranquility, peace, at his home in the Cove, Coupled with a self-restricting case of erectile dysfunction, <laughs> our friend Jimmy has lived to fight another decade. And aren't we all the beneficiaries of it? Cheers. <laughs> a great number of Jimmy's closest friends closest, were not able to attend today's event due to very questionable and clearly lame excuses. <laughs> but, I, but I've been asked to read from just a few of these many best wishes, Jimmy. Former President Trump, happy birthday to me. <laughs> Garrison, Ke Garrison Keeler, happy birthday to my number one fan. Please quit stalking me. <laughs> Josh Stein, candidate for North Carolina governor. Happy birthday, my good friend. Please send more money. <laughs> Cherry Beasley, candidate for U.S. Senate. Happy birthday, Mr. James D. Warley. Please send more money. <laughs> Omar. The street vendor outside the entrance to your Washington White House. <laughs> Happy birthday, infidel. May Allah forgive you. <laughs> and finally, one that wasn't fully signed, but just initial. You're so handsome, so manly, robust at 70. And just initial JW. <laughs> the remarkable thing is example by what we're just doing. The remarkable thing is how Jimmy takes life with such a laugh, and it's such a pleasure. It's, uh, some of my best long nights are ones where Jimmy gets on a roll and hardly presents one joke after another. His memory for jokes he has heard over 70 years is a thing of wonder. What's also a thing of wonder is his in uncanny inability to read his audience. <laughs> I had a dollar for every time I heard Valerie say, Jimmy, that's just not funny. I would be the one paying for your drinks tonight. <laughs> Nevertheless, we have to admire someone who receives a 99% disapproval rating, is clearly not deterred, and simply keeps on telling me. Jimmy, you're like the Gentile every day. <laughs> But as much as Jimmy likes to have fun, I know of no one who could have been more serious about his family. There could be no one more supportive, there could be no more supportive son to his mother Mary and his father Bert. Jimmy has always been there to lend a hand to his sister Sandy and Megan and continues to be supportive of his nephews and nieces. And then there's Dee Dee, who's like a sister Best friend, cousin, mother, girlfriend, <laughs> all wrapped in one. I still, I still haven't figured this one out. <laughs> I could have said a few other things. Unlike my wonderful wife, Jeannie, who I'm free to talk about because of her absence, Jimmy would never ask, what the hell would you, Jimmy would never ask, would, uh, would never ask, what the hell did you do how much is this going to cost me, or can I can it wait until after my massage? <laughs> Jimmy would simply say, "Where are you? 
how much money do we need, and I'm on the next one. Something I appreciate. My wonderful late father, who I thought the world of, who thought the world of Jim. Often they often said, you can judge a person by who he associates with. Well, I can say, I've always been proud of my association with Jimmy Warley. Always. Well, maybe not always. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the time. <laughs> Tonight, anyway. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> when we all look at our lives and who are our best mates, spouses, closest companions, and who they have become to us, we are reminded of the fortuitous love that brought us together. For Jimmy and I, it was our good friend, Dr. Wallace Hyde. The doctor, by the way, was a doctor in highway safety, something that he never taught Jimmy. Uh, <laughs> uh, the Wallace, originally from this area, the Asheville area, was like a second father mentor to Jimmy and a great friend of my father's. In 1978, 44 years, 44 years, Jimmy, in Governor Hunt's first re-election campaign, Wallace Hyde, who co-chaired that campaign, introduced Jimmy and I, got us together, and he said, Wallace said two things to me. Wallace said, get to know Jimmy. He's bright, smart, and has a great future. Second, don't worry about an open bid for the campaign's yard signs, bumper stickers, and buttons. I've already promised that to Jimmy. <laughs> Steve Metcalf, don't we long for those days. <laughs> Over these past 44 years, Jimmy and I have become great friends and traveling companions, as mentioned earlier story memories that have made my life so much fuller. On traveling stories, although there are too many, there is one that comes to mind that made the censors cut. After our long, grueling political campaign, judge, which translates into losing, <laughs> uh, I arranged for an all-expense paid trip to a resort in Jamaica called Hedonism II. <laughs> Obviously, my selection was solely based on the name without any due diligence. <laughs> After paying in advance for one full week, and we were broke kids back then, still are. Uh, <laughs> after paying in advance for one full week, we arrived to realize that there were no guests of the opposite sex. It was a resort for, for all male gay men. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> Please keep in mind that this was an er in the early development phase of Jimmy's and my relationship. <laughs> and before our marriage not to each other. <laughs> Jimmy, of course, became suspicious because I was the one that had booked the trip. <laughs> it got worse. The second evening, the club hosted a toga party for its guests, which looked awfully like a KKK pup tick gathering. <laughs> After being repeatedly asked to dance by other guests, Jimmy and I resorted to holding hands, true story, <laughs> holding hands for the rest of our stay there, which wasn't, which wasn't the full seven days. I want to go on record. Like, like Steve, it's, we, we were exclaiming to all, on, on, all interested onlookers our everlasting love for each other. <laughs> and, for fear of my, to my, and for no fear to my masculinity, I can say unequivocally a love that I still have to this day for my very best Honeypot, buddy Jimmy. <laughs> so, so you'll be glad to hear these words. In closing, I think we would all agree that Jimmy Warlick is a remarkable person. By his own fortitude and persistence, Jimmy Warlick has become a very successful businessman after being knocked down many, many times. Jimmy Warlick has always put his family first and supported them at every turn. Jimmy Warlick has made a pledge to get back to his communities, as Claude will speak about, exhibiting his support for the local Morganton Public Schools, the Morganton Museum, and many other good causes. I am confident, now at 70 years old, poof, <laughs> Say it that way. That Jim, <laughs> it, it hurts me. I am confident that Jimmy, now at 70 years old, must feel at peace with who he is and who he has become. I know Mary and Bird would be, and I know we all are. So, please raise your glasses. Yeah. And toast the youngest 70 year old, some would say least mature, I know, <laughs> Jimmy Ward. <laughs>